Hi, so I'm going to try and keep this as concise as I can um, to hopefully not take up your whole day, but I don't know how long this will actually take, so you, you'll already know the timestamp is there, but I want to talk about the accusations that are being made about me. I don't actually have a script for this, so there'll probably be cuts here and there of me just trying to make sure I gather my thoughts and say everything that I need to say, uh, so bear with me on that one, but it's mostly going to be an unedited video besides some cuts and maybe a screenshot here and there if it's necessary. I'm not sure yet. Before I actually move on to talk about Essence of Thought, I want to firstly talk about the H-Bomber guy thing because this is something that keeps getting brought up and I haven't actually addressed it. Um, so I want to get that out of the way first, just to get that out of the way first and then we'll talk about Essence of Thought. So the H-Bomber guy thing. He made his plagiarism and YouTube video. And because I've been covering Illuminati, I watched it mostly because of the Illuminati thing, because I didn't actually know who H-Bomber guy was. Again, don't come for me for that. I just can't know every YouTuber. So in that, he said some stuff about drama channels that I didn't agree with. So I made a video and I said, I really liked H-Bomber guy's video. I think the stuff that he said about plagiarism was great. He did a really good job with the video, but there's one little bit that I didn't like. And then I made sure to say, but that doesn't negate everything else that he said in the video. I just didn't like this one part. And people were furious. And I'm going to be honest, I don't understand why. Like, I, I, I don't get it because I just gave my opinion on one thing he said while saying everything else he said about plagiarism was great. And I've learned from it and I think other people can learn from it. And to the people who are here watching because they hate me because the H-Bomber guy video, this is not going to be the answer that you want um, but I really don't understand why people were so angry. Obviously there were some people saying I was taking it too seriously and that was kind of the end of it like that's fine I'm not talking about those people which was a lot of people but there were also people who were saying oh cry more Evangelina oh you're so dramatic oh you're overreacting oh you've probably you know done the worst things possible and that's why you're so butthurt about H-Bomber guy you're attacking H-Bomber guy. None of that was true. I said I liked his video I didn't agree with that one part, but I liked the rest of the video, the whole, what was it, three, four hour long video? I liked the whole rest of that. Some people thought that I was shading him because I said not everybody wants to watch a four hour video essay about an obscure game from the 90s and they said that that was shaded H-Bomber guy. That was the example I used because at the time I was working on a four hour video essay about an obscure video game from the 90s. That was why, well, it might not have been four hours, to be honest, it was probably only an hour. I ended up scrapping that video anyway because I knew it would be received poorly after the H-Bomber guy thing. What I do understand what people are angry about is how I reacted to people getting angry at me because I reacted really childishly and I'm going to be honest, not a good look. Um, I just... people. This was at the people that were furious, by the way, not the people who were just saying, you're maybe overreacting a bit, like, tone it down. That was fine. Um... It was the, I was, I didn't understand the people who were furious and I, I just didn't think it was that serious. So I made some childish tweets about it, didn't think about it and I did react childishly and I think sometimes I just forget that I have an audience, to be honest with you. Um, so I just, I just don't think about what I'm, what I'm tweeting sometimes, especially on Twitter because people don't really react to my Twitter and stuff. Um, I'm I'm a bit sporadic with it. But yeah, I did react childishly to that. And I understand the people who are angry about that. So for that, I'm sorry. I was acting like a big child. I just didn't think it was that serious. But the people who were initially furious, not the people who critiqued me, that's fine. But the people who were initially furious at my video, I don't understand it. Because I didn't say anything wrong about the rest of the video. I just said I don't agree with what he said about people who make drama content. And I think I should be allowed to say that. Um, people are going to disagree. <laughs> so let's move on because that's not the point of this. I just wanted to get that out of the way. That's where I stand. If somebody wants to explain to me what was so bad about what I said in the H-Bomber guy video, I'm willing to listen. Um, I just, I truly, it's not that I'm being stubborn. I just, I just don't get it. Um, th that's that. But I am sorry that I reacted childishly. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that. Didn't look great. But, um, right, let's move on then to the main thing of the day is the essence of thought thing. 
So a couple of you will know what this is about. Um, probably a lot of you won't. But if you don't, then a channel called Essence of Thought has accused me of plagiarizing their video about Lily Orchard. So I'm just looking at the email to make sure that I don't um, misrepresent the email. By the way, Ethel shared these emails on her video, so I'm. it's okay for me to be sharing these emails. I wouldn't normally share emails um, unless the other person's done it first. So she's already done that, so this is fine. Um, but she emailed me and said that I had plagiarized her Lily Orchard video, um, used the same screenshots and said things word for word, that it is a violation of copyright law and they expect it to be cor corrected. Sorry. And they said because of this, they feel they're entitled to 30% of the ad revenue for the video, 30% of the the money from the sponsor of that video and 30% of my monthly Patreon earnings. Um, which, can we get this out of the way right now? I, I don't have a lot of patrons. Um, actually, Essence of Thought has way more patrons than me. So really, Patreon is not a source of income for me. It's um, it, it maybe one day, but not now. <laughs> um, but I do make a little bit of money from it, in fairness. Um, but yeah, so they said that they wanted 30% of my ad revenue for that video for the sponsor money and for the entire month of Patreon. Otherwise, they were going to end up making a video about me. This is said in the later email, um, but it was quite clear what was meant. So I just want to explain, well, I guess firstly why I didn't respond. Um, and I think you need to understand from my perspective that this is somebody emailing me claiming that I've plagiarized them and demanding money so that they don't make a video about me. And this is me knowing that I haven't plagiarized anyone's video. So in my eyes, when I get this, it feels like somebody is trying to extort me for money. And that is a serious legal issue. That's not something I can just immediately respond to and be like, no, or here's some money. So I really did feel like this was somebody trying to extort me. I still kind of do. Um, but weirdly, I didn't initially realize who this was. Um, I did pretty quickly, but initially I just thought this is just some random person saying that I owe them money. Like this is just some random YouTuber trying to blackmail me. As soon as I did realize who it was though, that kind of brings me to my second reason why I didn't respond. Um, because I'm aware of Essence of Thought. I've not watched their videos, but <sighs> I don't know how to say this properly, but, and you're not supposed to admit things like this online, but I am terrified of Ethel, like truly terrified of Ethel because I have seen her history of harassing people and she doesn't stop. And Everything is blown to the extreme. Lies are told, things are distorted, and she just doesn't stop. There's one creator, you all know who I'm talking about, if you're aware of Essence of Thought at all, who she's been harassing for five years. Um, so at this point of this email, I'm freaking out, thinking, if I respond in any way, without just giving them money to shut them up, which I don't want to give somebody money to shut them up. I don't want to give somebody hush money. I'm not Jeffree Star. Like, that's that's not what I'm trying to do. So I'm thinking if I respond in any way, this person is going to be furious. This person's going to go ballistic and it's going to actually be worse. I knew they were going to make a video about me if I didn't respond, but I didn't want to make them angrier because I was scared of them. I did go back and forth thinking, should I just respond? Should I try to handle this and just explain, no, I didn't plagiarize your video. I'm not sure why you think that. Maybe we can talk about it. I don't know what's going on here, to be honest with you. But after they sent their first email to me, um, they were tweeting about this whole thing immediately calling me a plagiarist. Um, not using my name, at least in fairness, uh, but calling me a plagiarist. So just saying these things as fact without having discussed it to me, or with me. So they weren't open to actually discussing this. There was no room in her mind for the chance that 
this was a misunderstanding. But while, or after they had sent the first email to me saying, pay me 30% of your income, um, they tweeted and sent an email to the sponsor of that video to try and what it looks like to harm my income. So my fears were confirmed, at least in my opinion, that this was somebody who was maliciously trying to attack me and trying to damage my income. And I was a bit freaked out. Like, what what do I do in that situation? This is somebody who's already calling me a plagiarist. If I talk to them, what's going to happen? The very next day, they sent me another email after they'd already reached out to HelloFresh. And at this point, they'd already started scripting the video, I believe. Um, from what they've said, they had already started working on this video. So again, leads to my suspicions that they were going to make a video about me no matter what. And again, at this point, I'd accepted that they were going to make a video about me. So in the second email, it says that you've changed your description, which I will I will go into the description. I will go into the sourcing of everything, by the way. Um, you've changed your description. Use of data triangulation, which still confuses me because that's not what data triangulation means. But regardless, um, I'd like to give you one final chance to make amends before I go public with everything, which again, to me, just felt like I was being blackmailed, that somebody was trying to extort me for money because again, I knew that I hadn't plagiarized anybody's video. And anybody who I consulted about this, without me using the words extortion or blackmail, said the exact same thing. So what was I supposed to think at this point? I just chose the route of they're going to make a video about me. They're already going after my income. They've contacted sponsors to try and get me into trouble and make me lose a source of income. They're trying to extort me for money in my view. And they're going to make a video about me no matter what I do. They're not going to listen to me. They're not going to listen to any kind of, or come to any kind of understanding that this may have been a misunderstanding. They'd made their mind up. So let me just explain how I came to actually make the Lily Orchard video and how I researched it and stuff just to give you a better understanding because me just saying I didn't plagiarize the video th that's not enough right so a couple of months ago I believe uh, a couple of people messaged me in dms to ask me would I consider covering the Lily Orchard stuff I do get dms from time to time from people actually quite frequently from people asking me to cover certain situations and it tends to happen that I guess one topic will have kind of picked up and a couple of people will message me at the same time. So I had a couple of messages. Um, one of them I remember was like offering to put me in contact with somebody who was involved. Uh, and then there was people offering information or people who just like typed out like a brief history of. Uh, I didn't initially respond to stuff. I don't know why. I, I really don't remember. I might have just been busy. So I didn't initially respond to any of the things not for any reason other than I guess I just forgot or I didn't think to do it at the time or I thought I'd come back to it or I was busy whatever it was um but then a couple months later a video from definitely bored oranges came up in my homepage, and I saw the name Lily Orchard and I thought oh yeah I've heard that name before I couldn't remember where I'd heard it couldn't remember that people had dm'd me and I said oh, okay I'll watch that see what this is about it gave me kind of a brief overview of some of the stuff. Um, to be honest, I found it a little bit hard to follow that video, not because of the video. Uh, the video was fine. It was just because I didn't know Lily Orchard and I didn't know what was actually going on besides some of the stuff that people had DM'd me, but I hadn't fully read through everything at this point. Weirdly, after I got recommended that video, uh, another person reached out to me about Lily Orchard and I don't know if it was just because stuff was picking up again at the time. Like I said, things just seemed to happen all around the same time. So I did respond to that person and I talked to them. Uh, they gave me information. They gave me some screenshots. They pointed me in the direction of stuff. And then I also obviously did quite a lot of my own research. Um, I went and looked online. I looked at uh, well, Encyclopedia Dramatica was one of them. Random Reddit posts, random Tumblr posts. Um, and quite a lot of the stuff actually came from a Tumblr blog, which I originally linked in the description of my Lily Orchard video. Uh, I think it was called Lily Orchard Gossip Blog. 
My aim with that video was to give like a concise overview of stuff, like of some of the main points and I even said that in the video, like there's a lot more. If people want, I'll make a second video. But generally I like to keep videos kind of short and digestible, like around the 30 minute mark. I should mention as well, one of the sources that I didn't mention and I still haven't mentioned, and this, admitting this is probably gonna get me in trouble, but um, was actually Kiwi Farms. And I only really went there to see archives, screenshots of things, things like that. Um, I didn't link that and I, I haven't linked it now because Kiwi Farms is a very controversial place, understandably so. And um, it's a message board, so it's not actually a source, but I did get some archive links and screenshots and background information from there, which I then went on obviously to like verify from other places. Now here's where I tell you what I did wrong, right? So I did not properly source everything that I used in the description because most of the information that I got was from that Tumblr blog, as well as the person that I'd been talking to and some other people who had messaged me previously. The person who I mentioned didn't want to be sourced, that's fine. They're not a YouTuber, so that was the end of that. Um, the gossip blog, I did link, but I didn't go into any of the individual links within that because the Tumblr blog was sort of a collection of other links. I also didn't put the Definitely Bored Oranges video as a source. I think honestly, just because I didn't use it for research, but looking back on it now, I probably should have put that because I did watch it, um, or at the very least put it as like further watching or something. So when Essence of Thought reached out to me, I thought, well, okay, yeah, fair enough. I haven't actually done a good enough job of putting all the sources more concisely. So I'm gonna fix that. And I went into the Tumblr blog. I took a few of the specific links from the the Tumblr blog and I put them in. I put the Definitely Bored Oranges video because I had watched it. I put Encyclopedia Dramatica because I had looked at it and I gotten a lot of information from there. Didn't put Kiwi Farms for the reasons that we've already discussed. It's not actually a proper source really. Um, and I put a video that I didn't actually watch but I had been told about it. So that was a members only uh, interview with Courtney. But I put that there because I had heard about it. I knew some of the stuff that was said there, but I put it there, but I didn't watch it. Um, in the second video that I was gonna make about Lily Orchard, I was actually gonna try and get in contact with Courtney, but I don't think there'll be a second video at this point. So we'll see. At that point, I would have watched the, the video. That was my point. Um, but yeah, that was it. But that was all the sources that I used. I also put a thank you to the people that had messaged me to make it clear that that is what happened. By the way, that's not something that happens for every video, but it does happen time to time. It's usually when a topic's a little bit more niche that somebody will go and send stuff. Or if it's about Trish Paytas, because people seem to have receipts on hand for Trish Paytas. The other thing that I did wrong in this situation was that I didn't check the source of all of the screenshots I used. Because like I said, some of them came from random Reddit posts, random Tumblr posts, um, and from the DMs as well. And I didn't check where those originated from, which was stupid. I probably should have checked that. I should, not probably, I definitely should have checked that. I have no excuse for why I didn't check that beyond I just didn't think of it, but I just didn't think of it as not actually a valid excuse. So I should have done that. And in the future, I will make sure that I do that. So what I will say is that I cannot guarantee that none of the screenshots that I received or that I found online in random places did not originate from Essence of Thought. But what I can guarantee is that I did not go to Essence of Thought's video to screenshot things and take that as my own. And this is the misunderstanding that I'm talking about because yeah, I messed up in the fact that I absolutely should have checked where those came from, but I did not go and steal those screenshots and then not credit Essence of Thought. So what I will do, because it is fair if those did originate from Essence of Thought, I will put Essence of Thought as a source in that video description. And I'm not doing that because I think it's gonna make them go away. I know that they won't. I'm doing it because it's the fair thing to do. And I guess as a, a gesture of good faith, but they've said, and let me find it here. I have their script. Um, 
We are beyond making amends at this point. I gave you that chance twice. I will make sure your reputation burns upon fires fueled by your own history. So they they don't want to discuss this. They don't want to make amends. I'm fully aware of that. I'm not putting their channel as a source to try and make amends or to try and make them go away or to try and make them not try to burn my reputation or whatever it is that they're trying to do. It's just because it's the fair thing to do. I will point out it's a bit alarming to have somebody so blatantly say that they plan to go on a smear campaign against me, but this is, as soon as I realised who this was that was contacting me, I knew this is where it was going. Um, so that's quite scary, but we'll, we'll move on swiftly from that. I just want to reiterate again, to make it really clear, I did not go to Essence of Thought's video, screenshot things, and take their work as my own. I did not do that. But I will still put the source there because maybe some of the screenshots, a handful of the screenshots that I used originated from Essence of Thought and I should have checked where every single screenshot came from. I'm doing that because it's the right thing to do. The other thing that she said I plagiarized was that um, there was a section in both of our videos talking about... Um, God, it, it's, doesn't, it's not too relevant, but we said the same thing of like... Lily Orchard's probably sending herself messages so that she can respond to them herself, right? We both said the same thing. And I'm going to be so honest here, and I don't mean this in any way to be insulting to Ethel. Please don't take it that way, because if I'm insulting Ethel, I'm insulting myself. But this is not like a super 4D chess move thought to have. Like, this is a very basic thought to have, because creators have been outed for doing that all the time and not just creators i'm sure we all have friends that have done that i'm sure we all know people who have done that from school days and things like that the it was my first thought and actually the reason it was my first thought was because as i was doing the research for this and i saw that i the thoughts of the comments came to my head and i could think of people commenting oh what if like she just did that herself and i was like yeah actually she probably did it's not a bizarre thing to think. I think most people, without being told that opinion, would think it themselves. I I truly believe that. Like, we just had the same thought. Um, they originally said I copied it word for word, which was not true. And then Ethel later did clarify that I did not actually say word for word, that it was just the same thought. So we did just have the same thought. That's not plagiarism. Uh, it's just a really obvious thing to think, in in my opinion. Uh, at least, like, half of the people who would see that without, without being told of that opinion would think the same thing. They'd have the same opinion. Because we all know people who have done that. We've seen creators who have done that. Another thing that Ethel said that I plagiarized was um, Stockholm, I guess. So that was um, a fan fiction thing that Lily Orchard had written. It's horrific, by the way. Um, so it's quite a big deal to do with Lily Orchard. Like, it's brought up a lot, so obviously I had to talk about it. And I summarised some of the main points of what Stockholm is about, because obviously it's YouTube. I didn't want to go into the full details of it, because, like, it's disgusting and it involves, like, underage characters. And because I did that, Ethel was saying that I plagiarized their video because they also talked about Stockholm, but th it just doesn't make sense. Like, I think they're trying to say that I plagiarized their analysis of it, but I didn't analyze it. I just summarized it and pointed out that it's gross, which I think saying it's gross, it's not really like a full on analysis. It's just like very obvious that it's gross. Like that that's the bare minimum of what I could say about it. Um, maybe people wanted a more in-depth analysis. It's just not the way that I, I do stuff on my channel generally. And I went through the main points. I said why it was disgusting and I moved on. And I don't think us talking about the same thing, the same fan fiction, I don't think me summarizing the fan fiction is plagiarizing Essence of Thought. It's not even plagiarizing Lily Orchard. It's just summarizing the main points of a fan fiction. So that stuff, I don't know. I, <laughs> I just, I didn't plagiarize it. Also, I, I feel the need to point out, I didn't see that. I didn't see them talking about Stockholm. 
I didn't watch the clip of them saying anything to do with, oh, maybe Lily Orchard has sent herself messages. I did not see that. I can't possibly plagiarize something that I haven't even watched. And I say this not to be mean, just to be fully honest so you understand where I'm coming from. I wouldn't have used Essence of Thought as research for my video because I don't trust them as a source of information giving, given what I know about them and how I've seen how she goes after people and how she twists things and how she lies about things from my understanding. I don't find her trustworthy. That's my own personal opinion. I'm not saying that you have to think that. That's what I think. So in my own ethics, I wouldn't have used her as a source. I didn't need to watch her video to find out what was going on about Lily Orchard because there were plenty other places to find that stuff out. So just to summarize the plagiarism stuff again, I didn't plagiarize the video. I didn't go and watch her video and screenshot stuff and use her work as research. Maybe some of the stuff that I found was originating from them, but I didn't realize and that is my fault for not checking, which is why they are now going to be an hour already a source in the Lily Orchard video, which again, I know won't make them stop. The next thing that I want to address, because this was brought up towards the end of the video, was that there was um, in that video, so if you don't know, Lily Orchard is trans. I didn't reference it in the video. It wasn't relevant. Um, but in the comments of that video, there were some transphobic comments. And I am genuinely glad that this was brought up because, well, firstly, I didn't see them and I should have seen them. I should have garnered and assumed this is a controversial person who is trans. I should have assumed there will be transphobia in the comments and I didn't and that is a failing on my part. I should have done a better job of monitoring the comments on that video but I didn't and I am genuinely sorry for that and I am glad it was brought up because this is something that I needed to address. So I am very sorry that I did not monitor those comments properly. I'm very sorry that I didn't think about that. I should have thought about that. I should have done better. And in the future, I will try my hardest to do much, much better than that. I will try and monitor my comments properly, especially on videos where there's a chance that people could be not just transphobic, but anything, you know, anything ableist or homophobic or racist or anything like that. I will do much better and I'm very sorry for that. And I am glad that this was brought to my attention. So thank you for that one. That was quite heavy. So just to lighten things up a bit before we move on to the next part, um, I just wanted to address this as well because I'm now also being accused of not being Irish because I said that I'm Macedonian. And this is so not serious, but I just want to get it out of the way because it's something that I've actually been accused of before. I think it might have been um, to do with Eugenia Cooney, I think, the Eugenia Cooney subreddit. I think somebody said this about me and I've seen it before. Um, by the way, Ethel was not the one saying this. Uh, there was a comment. I think I have a screenshot. I'll try to find it. It'll be up on screen if I can find it. Uh, of Somebody saying that I'm lying about being Irish because I said before that I was Macedonian and Ethel like responding to that. So I am Irish. I was born in Dublin. I lived in Ireland for most of my life. Did all my schooling here. In fact, like primary school, I actually went to a Gwail school. So I speak fluent Irish. I am Irish. But at the same time, I am also Macedonian. And you may be asking how that's possible. Although actually, to be honest, probably like most of you aren't asking that because it's fairly straightforward. But there's like just a small handful of people who can't seem to figure this out. So I just want to say it now so I don't have to address it again because it's so ridiculous. It's so unserious compared to the rest of the stuff going on in this video. But I just wanted to lighten it up a bit. Um, sometimes people from two different countries will have a child. So that's what happened here. My mother is Irish. My father is Macedonian. I was born and raised in Ireland. And then when I was 17, just before I turned 18, after I finished secondary school, I moved to Macedonia and I lived there. So I am Irish. I am Macedonian, both by blood and by nationality because I have two passports. I'm a dual citizen of both Ireland and Macedonia. It's not very complicated. I think 
the the small small tiny minority of people who are accusing me of this are going to continue to accuse me of this but I just didn't want it to become a thing and also it was a little bit funny to be honest with you so <laughs> um we've cleared that up that was clearly not as serious as everything else but I just wanted to get that out of the way so I I have some final things that I want to say um and again, I'm worried about saying them because I don't I don't want to misconstrue anything and I'm not trying to attack anyone and I don't I don't want this to turn into a thing. But I genuinely don't believe that essence of thought went into this in good faith. I I don't know if I should say that, but I don't. Um the reason I don't there's a lot of reasons why I don't. The first is obviously the initial contact being give me money, which came off really badly. Um, all the while they're contacting my sponsors, trying to harm my income. They're already calling me a plagiarist without having spoken to me. And they're already writing their video about me. I also think maybe in some part, this wasn't originally about me. Um, because I'm friends with somebody that they have been harassing for years and I think maybe this was just a way to continue to harass that other person in a small way. I might be wrong about that. Um, there's a lot of other things as well. I mean the fact that they've said, where's the quote again so I don't misquote it, <laughs> hold on. I will make sure your reputation burns. That's clearly just saying, I'm going to smear you. I want to ruin your reputation and take away your livelihood. That's what it is. And it's hard for me to see that this might be in good faith if that's the approach that you're going to take. There was also a lot of ways that they sort of twisted things to, I guess, m emotionally manipulate people who are watching into hating me more, but, but but for things that I, I didn't do, besides the, the plagiarism, which I'm saying I didn't do, but you could argue that was a misunderstanding. Like there's a part in their video where she's talking about how they're going through some financial difficulties, something to do with her wife's job. It's none of my business, but they said it in the video. But that was followed up by, I'm taking food from their starving mouths because I made a video on the same topic. That's just, <laughs> I mean, it's making it sound like I'm depriving you of money. Like I'm, I'm the reason something is happening with your wife's job and the reason that you're maybe not making as much money. And I've been there like last year, you all know I had a, a really rough time and I'm maybe not fully okay now. I probably shouldn't admit this on YouTube, but I'm maybe not fully okay now, but things are better. But I'm not taking food from your starving mouths. That's a really emotionally loaded statement. And like, I am sorry you're going through a hard time. I don't, I don't want anybody to be going through a hard time, but it's got nothing to do with me. Your video was made way before my video. My video didn't take views from your video because most views occur when a video comes up and in the field that I'm in of YouTube, we're all making videos about the same topics. I mean, me and Marky made a video on the exact same topic on the exact same day, like 40 minutes apart, his came after mine. And neither of us feel badly about him. I actually messaged him to joke about it. Like that was it. I was like, crazy how that happened. And that was the end of it. I won't go on that too much, but it's just really emotionally loaded. It just felt just felt it, it just didn't sit right with me um the other thing was that the thumbnail for the video was Vangelina Skov scams her patrons which I didn't do and that's not something that came up in the video it was just to add an extra accusation onto me just to make me look worse and to have people go into the video already angry and she said something, um, if you're a member of her Patreon, do you like being played for a sucker? Because that's what she's doing. Again, like, it's just trying to... What's the word? <sighs> trying to kind of suggest accusations that just aren't 
in any way true. And it's also, once again, just like with the contacting my sponsors, is trying to attack my income because you're trying to get people to leave my Patreon, which if they want to do that, they can do that, of course. Like, I'm not holding them there hostage. But it's another thing to try and incite people to leave the Patreon for no reason. Just because you're saying that I'm scamming them, but I'm not. And you didn't even... Like, that's it's just not a thing. It's just another reason why I feel like this is bad faith. Another thing was that she said, I'm just another Illuminati. But Illuminati has been accused of abusing people, allegedly. It's just not the same thing. And that was just used because she could put it in the title, in the description, in the tags for good SEO. So if people search Illuminati, that video might come up. It's also, again, trying to suggest accusations that aren't there to try and associate me. That's the word I'm looking for, to try and associate me with really terrible things. But I, I didn't do them. They also had an entire section, how this affected my health. It was that they had a tooth infection and a broken foot before, before I even published my video, before they reached out to me or anything. And for some reason, I made it harder. It just doesn't make any sense. It feels like, again, you're trying to associate me with things that have nothing to do with me. I mean, that's the equivalent of like, you guys know, some of you will know anyway, that I had an MRI on my back recently, right? Because I have a really bad back. I have problem with leg pain. I have done for years, years at this point, over a decade. Um, and my back was really fucked a while ago, like really bad. Um, I couldn't sit, couldn't stand properly. It was awful. Uh, not even a while ago, like recently. It's only just starting to get better now. Uh, so I had an MRI on my back. But this is the equivalent of me saying, here's how Essence of Thought's video affected me. Before she contacted me, before she made a video, I had an MRI on my back and my back hurts. And that's their fault? Like... It... <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I really hope I'm not coming across terribly here. It's just, it just doesn't sit right. It it doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm being like associated with things that I didn't, like I have nothing to do with your broken foot. I, I didn't run over your foot. I'm sorry you're injured. It has absolutely nothing to do with me and it just feels like it's just trying to add as much negativity onto my name as possible to try and make sure people's emotions are heightened so they hate me as much as they possibly can because they want to watch my reputation burn. But not even watch, they want to make sure it burns. So what am, what am I supposed to do here? The other thing, I'm going to put a trigger warning uh, skip to this time that's on screen. If you don't hear this, trigger warning for essay and stuff. They said, and this is just another reason why I don't, I just feel like this is just an attempt to smear me um, and to make people angry at me. And again, associating me with things that have nothing to do with me. They said that, sorry, they said that they were raped as a child. And that because of that, they're even more disgusted with my actions. And I, oh fuck, sorry. I just don't understand what that has to do with this. Like, of course, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I'm genuinely so sorry that happened to you. It's not relevant. This situation has nothing to do with this. You're accusing me of plagiarism. Why are you bringing this up? And like, I don't, I don't like to talk about my personal stuff a lot online, especially not on YouTube. Maybe every now and again, I'll say the odd thing on Twitter, but I never really go into depth about stuff. I think I used to maybe share a bit more um, way back when people were originally starting to watch me, but I don't do it so much anymore. But like, I, I've been through similar things in childhood. I've had terrible things happen to me as a child, but it's not relevant. It, it has nothing to do with this. 
I just don't, I don't get why you're bringing it up. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. Like, I didn't actually intend to get emotional. I don't think people intend to get emotional. Um, I'm trying to reel it in here. But the things that have happened to me as a child, any injuries or health issues that I'm having now, as well as the things that happened to Ethel as a child and any health issues or injuries that she's going through now have absolutely nothing to do with her accusing me of plagiarizing her video. And I just, it feels wrong that it's being dragged into this. It feels... I can't find the right words. It just feels like it's trying to get people, like I said, as an emotional as possible so that they will hate me more and to try and associate my name with things. And it's, it's really, really unfair to try... Uh, sorry, give me a second. I'm going to stop this so, so I can stop. It's really unfair to try and associate me with something awful and criminal that happened to you as a child that also happened to me as a child because I wouldn't give you money f for a video that I didn't plagiarize. I, I admit the part of Vault where I should have fully checked where all the screenshots may have originated from. I'm apologizing for that now. I'm doing my best to correct it by putting them as a source, but the accusations being made against me aren't true. I'm also going to address the transphobia that was happening in my comments and try and do better in the future, but but plagiarizing your video, I, d I didn't do that. And this is kind of like, all of this is the reason that I've, I've been really scared of Ethel, is the fact that I've seen her do this before and she's not going to stop and she's not going to leave me alone. And she made that very clear. Um, I mean, she said she wants to make sure that my reputation burns. And maybe she is going to succeed. And maybe I will lose my livelihood and my job and the thing that I love doing. And maybe she will. But this is all I can say on the matter. This is, this is really all I can say. Um... I know for some people this isn't going to be enough of a response, but I, I, I can't say anything else. I mean, these are the facts. Um, so I'm not going to respond to this again because they've made it very clear that they're going to continue making videos about me. She said she's going to make a video about the H-Bomber guy thing. There'll probably be future updates, a response to this video. I'm not going to make this a back and forth thing. I have nothing else to say. So this will serve as my only statement. I'm sorry if for some people this isn't enough, but it is the truth of the matter. It's the facts. It's how I feel about certain things. And I just, I can't say anything else. Again, I just want to reiterate, I know I'm like, I'm sounding like a broken record. I did not go to her video, screenshot things, and take her work as my own. I did not do that. There was no ill intent or malice in anything that I did. I just was being stupid. I did not check the source of every single screenshot I got, although I will say the majority of screenshots that I used definitely were taken directly from archives and things like that. I will do better in the future. I will do better with monitoring my comments and I don't know. Yes, I am Irish and Macedonian at the same time to try and lighten this up because I'm being like a really big baby right now. Again, if you hate me, that's okay. There's a huge amount of people who hate me since the H-Bomber guy video. Um, I'm not here trying to like change anybody's minds about hating me. It doesn't feel nice, obviously, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but I do hope you'll at least listen to what I'm saying because this, this is the truth. I know my audience would never do this. I've said this so many times. I've been blessed with such a lovely audience, but I do want to say it just in case. Obviously, please do not harass or send any hate, hate 
sorry, to Ethel or to anybody involved. To be perfectly honest, this is a courtesy that was not extended to me. Um, her audience did come after me, some quite viciously, others maybe not so viciously. And she never told them not to. And I, I've heard from people before that they tend to do this. But <laughs> that aside, please do not, please do not harass or send hate to anybody. That is not what I want. I just want to explain because I know people were confused and I know people were disappointed, but I did not plagiarize anything. And that is that. If you still want to stick around, then thank you. Uh, if you don't, then it, it was nice to have you here. I'm glad you listened to me. Um, I guess we'll all see my reputation burn. And um, yeah. Okay. Bye.